Hi, I'm Shirella. I have a super tip today for finding truth for you to be your best. And this is something that will help you to make decisions, to receive answers, to notice truth despite your fears or your ego, to understand and love other people better. One tip I have. I call it a super tip. Okay, now I'm going to pause for a second and tell you something about me that might make you mad. Because this would probably make a lot of people mad. And this, that is the fact or opinion or the, we'll say, the idea that I don't like dogs. I know it's man's best friend, but not this woe man's best friend. Dogs are a nuisance. A dog woke me up this morning at 7.04 whining and all the other dogs in the neighborhood started whining too. If I'm out on a walk, I have bit, been bitten a couple of times by dogs who seem to think that they need to have the superiority complex over me, the human, who has the prefrontal cortex that they don't have. Dogs are stinky. They leave dog poop on my backyard. They are annoying. How many other, other things do I need to say about dogs to convince you? That's not my favorite thing. But I know so many people who have dogs, like everyone around me has dogs. And my family has dogs, people that I know, not my direct family, because none of us are very keen on dogs right now, especially when we're losing sleep over it. So one thing that I like to do in a situation like this is when I'm talking to someone and they're talking about their dog like it's their kid, I'm sorry if you're one of them, but really, they're not your kid. Anyway, I have to find a way for me to be able to understand how they can like this dog, how they can treat this dog like a, a kid, and how it is they love the dog so much. And this super tip that I'm telling you is the way that I can understand how people can like dogs. And that is to be able to get to a place of neutrality. When I can really think about it and get to this space of neutrality, I can actually wish I had a dog myself. <laughs> it's true. So let me tell you these steps. The steps for getting to neutral to be your best. Okay. The first thing that you got to do is you got to breathe. Okay. There's something very cathartic and helpful about breathing. That helps you get out of tenseness. Helps you ground yourself. Helps you be able to not be so set on your ways. So to breathe. Then think about that thing the way that you normally think about it. So I might be thinking about this dog of, I don't like dogs. I don't like dogs at all. Of course I don't like dogs. Now what you're going to do. So I'm going to say that step is fill your passion or your desire. My passion is I don't like dogs. Then what you're going to do is you're going to try to f cross that line into what it would feel like to feel the opposite thing. So all of a sudden I'm like, oh, well, what would it be like to have a dog that loves you and is so excited to see you when you come home from work or from the store and they'll do anything for you. And they look at you with those little puppy dog eyes and you would just do anything for them. And they might save your life if you're drowning and they they bark to tell you if the bad guy is about to come to your house and they are just there for you all the time loving you no matter how awful you feel like you are that dog who will do anything for you and then i start to think oh maybe i should get a dog maybe that would be the perfect little companion and then i start to go on the other side of where i can see the truth of the opposite and then I can go back to, okay, but I don't like dogs. And then I can say, but what if I did? What if I had a whole slew of dogs? Maybe I could get four dogs and they would all love me. <laughs> and so I kind of knock back and forth to the yes to the no. I love dogs. I hate dogs. I hate dogs. I love dogs. Back and forth. So you're kind of stretching the muscles of your opinion to be able to accept both sides. Okay, so that step is feel into the opposite. The next step well, let's get, feel into the opposite and then to knock back and forth the yes and the no. Now 
you're going to get out of your head and into your heart. And for those of us who like to really think in the brain and to be kind of a lot of cerebral activity going on, uh, very literal thinking, logical thinking, this can be a hard thing. The hardest journey is the 12 inches from your head to your heart. So now you feel into your heart. And the heart feeling is one of expansiveness and openness. When you let go of the thoughts, your heart can be very quiet and calming or have a lot of feeling and emotions, but they may be different than your mind. So I might be thinking, oh, that cute dog. And it's not even words, it's just a feeling. So that's the next step is get out of your head and into the heart. Then you expand your space around you. You allow yourself to have this opinion and this expression of you that is larger than it currently is. You push it out. Push it out to the outside of the room, the outside of your property. Just kind of push that out so that you have this expansive openness. And then, here's the cool part. You've had both sides considered. I don't like dogs. I do like dogs. I know the dog thing is a dumb example because there's so many of things. It's like, who should I marry or should I take this job or, you know, life changing decisions. But I'm just using dogs because it's easy. And at this point of you've had this expansiveness around you. Now, the coolest part is you're going to shoot your perception heavenward. You're going to shoot it up and say, in a divine spirit, what is the truth for me? Should I get a dog? <laughs> I just heard a dog bark. Okay, now the dog's barking. It's hard to record these videos when the dogs start barking. Anyway, should I get a dog? And I shoot that heavenward. I've got this open mind. I've got an open heart. The space around me, my spirit is opened up. My perceptions are opened up. My opinions, everything is opened up. And I receive whatever the heaven answer towards me is with a humble, innocent openness of Whatever, either way, either I never get a dog or for sure I get a dog. And you just remain open as you feel into the answer, whatever that is. I like to think of it as laying out your mind flat like a blanket of anything's possible. I'll take whatever falls on the blanket, whatever. I'm open. I have no agenda. I have no ego. I have no guile. I am open to whatever the answer is. Then I like to center and close my eyes to be able to find that center vision in the middle to maintain openness of, I'm not going to go either way. I am fine with being in the middle. Because then when you actually get the answer of, I hate dogs, I'm never going to get dogs, or I love dogs, maybe I will get a dog, it's coming from a place of neutrality. And that is this huge tip of finding truth, is finding that place of neutrality. So, you ask God, everything being equally, what is the thing that I need for my truth for me? Do I get a dog? Do I not get a dog? Then, you see the person, place, or thing, whatever it is you're debating, with new eyes, a new perception, a new way of seeing this thing or things. You notice it without fear, judgment, or ego. Then you open your mind to that different thing to be able to receive the answer. Again, let me go over the steps of that neutrality. First of all, you breathe. You feel the passion or desire, the thing you really want. And then you start to cross the line and feel into the opposite thing. Then you knock back and forth. Yes or no? Yes or no? Think about, we're not talking about a dog anymore. We're talking about like really important things that you want to make a good decision about. Or just the thing that you're going to do this week that you can't decide about. So you've knocked back and forth. You get out of the head and into the heart. You expand your space around you. You shoot your perception heavenward with a humble and innocent openness, laying your mind out flat like a blanket so you receive whatever is falling onto that blanket. You center and close your eyes in the middle to maintain your openness. And then with God in your heart and mind and your own spirit ready to receive, seeing things with new eyes, noticing it without fear, judgment, or ego, you open your mind to the different thing and receive whatever answer is going to happen. I did this the other day. My family was going to uh, go out of state to visit with some other family. And I couldn't decide whether I should go or not. And I followed all these steps of, you know, knocking back and forth, considering the middle, 
Should I go? Should I stay or should I go? Da 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 da. And finally, in this complete neutral place, asking God, okay, God, open my mind to whatever truth is for me. I was willing to do whatever. I was fine with whatever. I had done my pros and cons. And in the end, my answer was, stay home. Let them go. You know that they'll have fun and they'll have fun whether you're there or not because they have lots of other people to hang out with their cousins, aunts and uncles, and I would just kind of be in the background anyway, just observing and having fun watching them. <laughs> and I had some things to do at home, some things I want to take care of. And so I think I made the right choice to stay home, even though either would have been fine. At first, I didn't want to go at all, but then I decided that there was uh, the place of neutrality that I would get to so that I would then consider both sides and know what truth would be for me this weekend that I was considering. And I think I did find the truth. How can you use these steps for something in your life that you're trying to maintain neutrality about so that you can also find truth for you? I use this neutral step all the time, several times a week probably, and of course on the big things in life. How can you find that place of neutrality so you can find happiness in the thing that is right for you? If you like to talk about self-care and go through these kind of mental exercises, you might like my program that I have for better all-around health from eating better, moving your body more, and better self-care by going to my program, which is a 91-day app-based program, and you can find it at www.honeydohealthin91.com.